Welcome to the Shireen Family Activity Center on the beautiful Utah Valley University campus. Today, the UVU women's volleyball team has its first home game of the season, hosting the Weber State Wildcats. That is coming up next, right here on the Wolverine Sports Network. everyone to the Shireen Family Activity Center here on the campus of Utah Valley University. I'm your host Kevin Castle. Joining me tonight is my good friend and broadcast partner Steve Vale. Steve, welcome to another exciting year of Wolverine Volleyball. We're going to talk about a few things here and as we get into this, the first thing we really want to talk about for tonight's match against the Weber State Wildcats is the key players. Steve, tell us a little bit about the key players and who we can expect to see big production from this evening. Well, for Utah Valley, we've got Brooklyn Hall, who's a returning setter. She's a junior this year. 6'1", very tall, very athletic, and runs her offense very well. Lindsey Morell, top outside hitter for, U for UV. She's a junior also this year. UV's been leaning on her shoulder big time. You got it. Also, we want to talk about the Weber State Wildcats and who we can expect to see big things from, from their side. Yeah, Rebecca Fuchs, the outside hitter and a freshman this year, she's been doing great things already early in this year for the Wildcats. And Caitlin Pinrod, who's the setter, she's a senior this year, looking to do some great things before she exits the program. And she's been red hot in her career so far for Weaver. Thanks, Steve. We talked about the key players. Now let's talk about the keys to the game and what each side needs to do to be victorious tonight. Steve, tell us a little bit about what we can expect to see this evening. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, Utah Valley, they want to just make sure they focus on passing the ball very well so they can stay in system. They can do that and key their blocking and keep on those hitters. They're going to be doing a great job. For Weber State, they got to keep the, their pace really fast and learn, limit their serve-receive errors. If they can pass well and keep that play really fast, they feel like they got a good shot against the Wolverines. Thanks, Steve. Folks, it looks like we have an exciting match on hand for you this evening. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Carly Johnson here on Utah Valley University's campus to find out why students are taking summer semester classes. Why did you choose to come to summer semester when you could be out somewhere else? Because I didn't go to school in the spring and so I was like I need to go in the summer. Summer semester is the cheapest compared to other semesters because everybody can pay residency tuition although you're a resident or not. Hi, hi, yeah. Do you have a second? Could you just get off the get off the phone for a minute? This is kind of important. The atmosphere is, is a lot funner. Um, you feel like all the other students are going through the same things that you're going through. They all want to get to the same level you're at and so everybody helps each other out. It's a lot more relaxed, a lot more chill. Get your degree done faster. Do you think the guys on campus are a little cuter during summer? Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. If you want to graduate in a timely manner, you have to uh, you have to take summer classes. So these are just a few reasons why summer is so great. Remember to include summer semester when planning with Wolverine Track. Summer, smarter than others. Welcome back everyone to the campus of Utah Valley University, Shirt and Family Activity Center here, where tonight the Wolverines are taking on the Wildcats from Weber State. 
Joining me in the broadcast this evening is Steve Vale. Steve, we've got an exciting match we're going to get to. Let's talk real quick about the starting lineups and uh, who we can expect to see out of both teams. Tonight for Utah Valley University at Libero is number one, Patty Hatch. At the center position, we have number three, Brooklyn Hall. Number nine, McKenna Tate is outside hitter. Number 11, Katie Fair, uh, Fritzler is the middle blocker. Number 13, Erica Nish is playing the opposite or the right side hitter position this evening. And uh, the other middle is number 16, Lauren Stringham. And then also the, to round it out at outside hitter, number 17, Bailey Ferris. Steve, go ahead and tell us who we can expect to see from Weber State. Yeah, for the Wildcats, uh, the two outside hitters getting a start are Rebecca Fuchs, number three, and Audrey Biggs, number five. The uh, out or the uh, middle blockers are Audrey Gee and uh, Brianna Wilms, and the setter is uh, Caitlin Penrod, Libero, Laurel Bodily. And uh, Tom Peterson in his second year is the head coach for Weaver State University. They come in two and four on the year. Once again, folks, thanks for uh, joining us. If you've been listening to the Costa Vida pregame report, you've probably seen where we talked about some of the players of the match and the key players uh, that have been, you know, the top performers for both Utah Valley and for Weber State. Tonight, we're already seeing uh, some production out of both of those uh, spots, especially uh, number three, Brooklyn Hall, formerly Brooklyn Campbell, at the setter position in her junior year, Steve, this year. Uh, expect to see big things out of her. Yeah, we just saw a really nice swing on the outside from Bailey Ferris for UV, number 17. And that attack out of the back row goes long for the Wildcats. Utah Valley opening up a uh, four to two lead here in the first set. And Patty Hatch, number one, back to serve for the Wolverines. Set outside that time, number, looks like number three, and that's Rebecca Fuchs, outside hitter. She's been one of the uh, big performers again, Steve. You mentioned her in the uh, opening uh, minute there in the Costa Vida pregame report, and it looks like she's uh, off to a good start already. We just had uh, Mariah Katoa enter the match, a transfer from BYU University, or Brigham Young University. Ferris lets that serve go wide. That's a point for Utah Valley. And they're up five to three in the first set. Erica Nish, who's playing right side, has already had one nice kill this evening. Looks like she gets a ace. Nope, not an ace serve. Yeah, it was an ace serve. I was right. So ace serve for Erica. So far, a, a pretty good night for Erica. She's coming off some knee surgery, so you can see she's got the uh, brace on there and some of the Kinesa tape uh, trying to hold her together there to get that knee back functioning properly. I think everybody in the building thought that first serve was going to go long. It just fell off the table, hit the back wow. line. Nice swing out of the back row. Was that Utah McKenna Valley. Tate? Bombing out of the back row. McKenna Tate, wow. That's awesome. All of 5'8", which uh, I'm going to call no way on that because uh, she's about the same size as Patty Hatch, <laughs> and uh, Patty's 5'6". So I'll say this, she can jump well. That kill attack goes long by the Wildcats. Utah Valley is settling into an 8-3 lead in the first set, up by five points. And Erica looking to continue her tough serving. You know, talking to uh, Coach Peterson before the match, he said he wanted to limit the serve-receive errors, and we just saw another one there. Struggling a little bit to uh, get comfortable in this first set. Weber State has got a pretty nice hole they've dug for themselves down six early in this first set. Yeah, and it's going to be timeout city here if they don't convert this chance right now. Nice swing on the outside by Katoa. Bomb down the line, but I think that ball was out off the antenna. Bailey Ferris just, if we watch it here, we can see she goes off the antenna. Yeah, she's got a pretty nice look here. She had some room on the line. The outside blocker not able to get out there, but she just tried to go a little too much on the line and caught the antenna. Slide attack by Fritzler. 
off the block of Utah Valley and then back to the outside to Ferris who tips and that catches Weber State into the net. You know, a lot of times when you see the block and they're so hungry for a block, especially because they're down a bunch and they know they need it, then when that off shot uh, or that off speed shot comes, they press a little too hard and end up violating the net. And uh, that's what happened there. Audrey Gee is a big girl too at 6'2", so she's going to be attacking. Wow, nice quite a move. Ferris out of the back row, putting it back in play. And one more time, I guess, for the tip from Penrod. Yeah, Cassie got that first one up, which was, uh, like I said, a nice move by her to get on that first ball, but the second one a little too much to handle. I mentioned her uh, tip move there in the warm-ups, and it looks like she's already uh, going to utilize it quite a bit here tonight. We'll see if Utah Valley picks that up and starts converting in transition on that. Bailey Ferris with a passing error. I don't think uh, Sam's going to give her too much room for error on those. We'll see how he goes. I know uh, Lindsay, uh, form for uh, formerly Lindsay Barker, but now Lindsay Morrell um, is typically starting in her spot, but nice uh, has had there. some uh, groin injuries, so I think they're kind of bringing her along a little bit slowly. Wow, big kill on the right side by number five, Audrey Biggs. McKenna Tate trying to show it and take it away, but uh, unable to get out there to the pin fast enough and got used on that swing. Looks like Coach Peterson is uh, calling for a substitution. Number one, Whitney Hunt entering the match to serve and play defense, it looks like, for the Wildcats. Not, not a bad job by the Wildcats to claw their way back in. Only down seven now. And eating up on that float serve is Cassie. Coach Atoa just trying to settle his team down a little bit. Referee uh, Terry Jackson asking him if he wants to get a substitution, but Coach Atoa is just trying to slow things down a little. Wow, they jump out to such a big lead. Cut down to two. From nine to three to 10 to eight. Decent pass by Patty. Outside McKenna Tate. We'll see if that overpass, oh, they converted Audrey Gee converting the overpass, Steve. That's uh, not what Coach Atoa wants to see. His team's down, uh, I'm sorry, up by one, but uh, it's not looking good at the moment for the momentum shift. Yeah, I was gonna say the momentum is all on the Weber State side of the net. Within one now, another tough serve. Weber State just getting it done at the service line. UV finally bailed out on that play. That uh, shot fails to cross the net. Cassie having a little bit of, I'm sorry, was that Cassie or was that Katie that was passing that last ball? Yeah, it was uh, Cassie. She was. was just getting torn up by that floater. Tough jump float coming from Weber State. But UV finally able to stop the bleeding. Nice quick set on the outside. Looks <laughs> oh, like uh, Weber State bailed out again. Katoa just spatched that ball into the cheap seats, but uh, UV Stringham pressing. was in the net, I think, on that one. Yeah, pressing a little too hard. You know, as a coach, you teach your players to press over the net, but uh, you got to be careful. It's a fine line. Wow, nice, uh, nice tool off the three-person block there by McKenna Tate. Man, for her size, she's really converting well this evening. Yeah, seriously, to, to go hard angle against uh, a triple block, that's a gutsy move. Brooklyn Hall back to serve for the Wolverines. Tough nice floater of her own. Wow, that had some pace on it. Right in that 5-6 spot between the libero and the outside hitter there. Let's see if she goes back there again. She does. Wow, another one. Brooklyn Hall, man, that's a tough serve right there, right down the line. Utah Valley regained their four-point lead of 14 to 10 here in the first set. Rebecca Fuchs transferred from Utah. Two in a row, passes that one beautifully. Steve, now you mentioned quite a few transfers that Weber State has. Tell us a little bit more about what's going on with all their uh, transfers and, and what's going on with their team as, as a result. Yeah, four of Weber State starters. Big block there wow. from Utah Valley. Three blocks in a row by Erica Nish. Solo blocks. See if we get a replay on this one. But well, man, hey, we're going to step aside them. as uh, 
Tom Peterson wants to talk about it, but we'll be back in just a moment with more Utah Valley Volleyball. Uh, we just we got see. the tail end. Of, oh, there, there it is right there. Three blocks in a row. I wish we could see all three of them like consecutively because it was just like one, two, and then the third one, it was like, no way I'm shutting down. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. I'm Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. Welcome back, folks, where we've got a 15-10 lead for Utah Valley here in set number one. Sorry we had to take a quick uh, cut out to the commercial there, but just uh, cleaning up a few things here for our first broadcast, and we'll get it all streamlined here for you. Utah Valley looks like they're going to Another net lose. violation there from Utah Valley. That's what, the third one, I think, uh, so far this this match. Yeah, the uh, the attack there for Weber State, I mean, just trying to keep the ball in play and Utah Valley bailing them out again. Bailey Ferris still struggling a little bit with the passing. She's in the right area. She just wow. got to get it off the net just a little bit. And that time she's a little bit behind the block, not sure where she was supposed to be on that back third of the floor there. Should have been more to the right of that block. Weber stayed dug early in that play, but got a second opportunity and just detonated for the kill to pull within three, 12-15 in this first set. Laurel Bodily, the libero serving for the Wildcats. On wow, the right side, oh, just stay. out. Man, she just falls out of the sky. That was a nice little chop by her into the angle, but I guess it was just wide. Watch here on the replay, you can see how she's just getting up and ripping that cross court. McKenna's a, a she's a great athlete. Wow. wow. <laughs> Erica Nish bombing on the left side. Who would who would have thought it? Who so just here. an amazing middle blocker taking a turn on the outside to show what she can do. And look at that hammer. Just like she's been doing it for four years now. Erica's our only retur uh, returning senior. So Patty with a great dig. Wow. I'll tell you what, if it's me, I'm not swinging at Erica tonight because yeah. she's just putting on a clinic. She's in fuego. <laughs> Look at that. Just housing that ball. I think she was smiling before it even happened. <laughs> nice pass for Weber, but that set, man, I'm surprised that really converted. That ball was set so low, but uh, number 15, Brianna Wilms, she adjusted well and got the kill on that. So yeah, right past the block and uh, Patty catching a little shrapnel there, trying to play some defense on a hard-driven ball. Wildcats are inching their way back into this uh, into this match, and now they're only down by two points, Steve. So once again, we see the sh shift in the momentum between both teams. Utah Valley gets a little lead. Wildcats yeah. come back and scrap back and, and get their way back into it. Yeah, so this has been a, this first set has been all about runs. I mean, uh, UV getting up big early on. Wildcats clawing back into it, and then UV breaking away again, 15 to 10, and now here we are, 18-15. Uh, a side out. Yuba and uh, Weaver State could be within two again. Patty flag back. To, I'm sorry, Patty Hatch back to serve. Nice, nice little by Patty. Shot. Get, oh, they just couldn't bring it back. Number 11, Katie Fritzler, trying to get that ball up off of Patty's dig. See here on the replay, she's just a little bit out of her reach and a little bit close to the net. Neither yeah. her or Brooklyn could get that ball up. Yeah, Patty making a nice move just to get to that ball, but uh, unable to keep that in play. Big outside hitter for the Wildcats, Rebecca Fuchs, number three, back to serve. Let's see what she can do. Nice wow. jump serve, man, that produces an ace, Steve, right in the back line. Yeah, that was a big serve there by Fuchs. 
Little chalk on the ball from the back line there. That is a tough ball to pass unless you go overhead and on a hard serve like that, that's hard to set a ball coming that fast. Looks like they're trying to make uh, Bailey and McKenna decide who's gonna pass the ball and I think wow. they're trying to get Bailey a little bit out of pass. sync. Did she get that? Wow. I thought she had Cute. it, but it only matters if uh, the first referee, Tom Given, thinks so. Nice dig by Patty. Again on the swing from Katoa. Oh, and they keep it alive again. Touch by McKenna. Weaver State nodding it up 18 to 18. See here, that ball might have gone long, but just a touch there by McKenna. And we are all knotted up at 18 apiece in this first set. Brianna Wilms with the kill now in number 15. Utah Valley and uh, Weaver look both, you know, to be trying to balance the attack tonight. Looks like they're spreading the, the ball out pretty well. Uh, neither of them relying on, you know, any one position uh, to get it done. Looks like they're both trying to be, you know, pretty liberal with where the ball's going and, and trying to get everybody involved. So early in the season, you tend to see that. I think when so the season kind of wears on and you find your big guns, that tends to kind of stop a little bit. So it looks like both teams, you know, spreading the wealth thus far. Yeah, and both teams uh, serving lights out so far this first set. I mean, just big, big serves, very aggressive, which is fun to see. I mean, a lot of times, the collegiate volleyball players are just, they try too hard, try to do too much, and they're serving out, serving in the net. But both teams just dialed in at the service line, wreaking havoc on the poor uh, serve-receive. The girls trying to pass those balls are struggling a little bit tonight, and, and both teams a little bit out of system. But, uh, I mean, nice job by Weaver State. They just will not go away. You know, one thing I think that's uh, probably pretty evident right now, I think Utah Valley playing with a little bit of nerves tonight. It's their first home match. Uh, you know, you got a good crowd here tonight. And they're last for a while too, yeah, right? That's right, a 12 game uh, road, road streak here coming up pretty soon. But first home game, you know, everybody's just a little bit tight. They don't want to lose. They don't want to look bad in front of the home. You know, they're one and three. So they're just at that part where, you know, they're, they're, they're making their move to, to kind of get their season going. And so I think they just need to kind of loosen up and, and uh, play their wow. play their game. <laughs> and I think they'll be okay. Yeah, the Wildcats with the low thunder. Patty Harris taking that off the shoulder. That was just a bomb. Yeah, I'll tell you, the, the Wildcats look pretty loose. And I'll tell you, that tentative volleyball, that just will not work ever. You have got to just feel good, feel confident, and stay aggressive. And right now, UV struggling in the serve receive. Looks like uh, Coach Atoa is trying to kind of take the court away. Yeah, Bailey trying to, go to, just, trying to go to swing hitter mode here. Yeah, Bailey was just taken out of the serve receive. And the Wildcats bail him out regardless. Bailey, Bailey back I, to serve. I mean, to be honest, Bailey's a freshman, true freshman. So uh, she's just out of Morgan High School. And I think you know, this is where she needs to really, you know, make her impact and, you know, do something wow. with her chance. Brooklyn Hall with the nice block there. They try to tip over the top. But just hanging, waiting for that shot to come, and she just gobbled it up. Just like you said, Steve, she reached over just at the last moment there and put that ball, tapped it down for the block. We saw Katoa with the roll shot there with just a little tip. That was one thing Coach Peterson mentioned early uh, when we talked to him before was she's just got a gnarly shoulder. It can bring so much heat. Nice tool off the block there from McKenna. But uh, Katoa will sometimes get tentative and try to, to shoot or tip the ball over. And he said, man, if she would just stay aggressive and bomb, good things will happen. And, and we saw there she tried to go soft over the block. and and Brooklyn just wasn't having any of it. McKenna Tate off to a great start. I think she's already got four kills this evening. I don't have the stats here right in front of me, but uh, I think she's off to a really good start. Bailey Ferris, we got to see a little bit of improvement for her in the passing game. I think she's just really nervous. It's obviously, like nerves. True, true freshman sure. uh, looking to, to come in. If, if she can settle down and you know convert and, and pass well, she could earn herself a starting spot. And, uh, yeah, you that know. transition to the bigger stage is, uh, is always a little bit scary. And, 
And, uh, you know, it'll take some time, but once she settles those nerves, you can tell she's a super athletic kid and will uh, we'll bring a ton to this offense. Boy, nobody more athletic on the court than number nine, McKenna Tate. I'm really impressed with her uh, performance this, this yeah, evening. I wonder what her vert is. She I gets up. Can't say it enough this evening, but, uh, man, folks at home watching, if, if you're watching anybody on the court tonight, watch number nine, McKenna Tate. She is on fire. Yeah, she just flies. And she's got to. If she really is 5'8", or 5'9", or whatever, boy, she, uh, or 5'6", whatever. <laughs> she's got to get up. Once again, outside to McKenna, who converts that, once with, more, just being smart, with going no high. Approach, yeah. That was just run so quickly, she didn't have a chance to get back and get an approach on that. She basically just standing jump and still able to go off the block and down. Looks like uh, Wildcats want a timeout. And Coach Peterson not liking the way this is shaping up here for the last few points of the match. He knows with the uh, rally scoring, he can't really afford to get behind too far. And he's already really at that point, Steve. Yeah, Down 23-20, I mean, you don't have a whole lot of chances left. Yeah, they are running out of road. They are just about uh, to the end of this first set, doing all he can just to slow down this UV offense. And Sam Otoa knows that, and he can talk. You can see the intensity in his eyes. No letdown. Stay aggressive. You guys, we got to take control of this tentatively. No, he wants this first home set. For sure, there's no doubt in my mind that Coach Toa wants to win this set, establish themselves here in this first set and in the match, and make sure that they come away with the win here in set number one and head into set number two and just build on that momentum. Yeah, Teams are I taking loved, the court. Uh, Tom, uh, when I spoke to him briefly before the match, he had uh, some words of wisdom. He says, I just like to, to keep my offense, you know, I, I, he's like, I, I don't want it to be simple, but I don't want to try to do, uh, what did he say, tactically what I can't do technically, which, you know, is awesome. I mean, that's such a smart approach to the game. Don't try to get your girls out of their comfort zone doing stuff they're not able to do. UV with set point. That ball sprayed long. Yeah, it looks like Katoa that time just goes long. Looks like she was trying to get down the line here, but you can see she goes high and just a little bit long. Nice pass for the Wildcats, tight. Penrod tries to tip it over. Brooklyn goes backside, and Fritzler for the set point. That ball's in, and that is in the first set, down. Steve. Wow, out of the timeout, UV with two quick ones. Look at that ball, seemed like it hung in the air forever, but it goes down. Folks, we'll be right back. Utah Valley wins the first set, 25 to 20. Don't go away. Valley University. Your life, your beat, your university. Oh, I want to go where the coconut grow, where the sun is shining on me. Costa Vida is where I want to be. Costa Vida. I never used to care about college sports. I mean, I go to a game or two, but it's mainly for social reasons, you know? And how has green fever affected your school spirit? I never miss a sporting event. You got NCAA baseball, softball, basketball, golf, wrestling, soccer, volleyball. I'm memorizing stats. I'm dreaming about Wolverines. I just bought a pet Wolverine. It tore my dad's favorite chair. It was wicked awesome. No, I, I don't play sports. I wouldn't want to make the athletes envious. I don't mess around, man. I'm Patty Garcia, 
a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Welcome back to the Shurian Activity Center at Utah Valley University. Getting a look at uh, some dancing moves there from the Utah Valley Wolverines. Utah Valley leading this first, uh, or this match, winning that first set 25-20. We saw some good things. Weber State just, they only hit 162 in that first set where Utah Valley hit just over 300. But I'll tell you, Weber State gave themselves plenty of opportunities. They had 37 total attempts. Utah Valley only had 23. The difference was when Utah Valley had an opportunity, they took care of the ball. Did a very nice job doing that. They did uh, one bright spot for Weber State is Brianna Wilms hitting 600 right now. So she is just red hot. Utah Valley, Erica Nish hitting 500. Looking pretty good herself. McKenna Tate mentioned her. She was red hot tonight. She's four for six, hitting 500 with just one hitting error. You know, the other thing that stands out to me, Steve, is is the team blocks. Uh, and I think those were all Erica's. Four, four <laughs> blocks uh, to none for Weber State. Wow. And Erica is just on fire tonight with the blocks. She's got two solos. Uh, and then I believe the other one was Uh, from Brooklyn, and then I think they had a combined block with, uh, I think it was Katie and Erica together. So Erica's just off to a great start, and Utah Valley off to a great start with the blocks. And again, uh, service aces though, both teams showing uh, that they've got four on, on each side, so not looking too bad there. As you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, tough, tough serving by both teams. So we'll see if that keeps up here in set number two. I don't see any major changes in lineups uh, for the Wildcats who are right in front of us on this side of the court. And I don't expect any from Utah Valley as well. Sam's usually, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of guy. So it doesn't look like there's any changes there as well. Yeah, I'm always anxious to see how uh, a team comes back from a loss like that. I mean, they battled all the way through. Tom taking a timeout at 23-20 and uh, hoping to sway that momentum and get it back on his side of the net. But uh, Utah Valley, too tough there at the end and just two quick ones and we were done. So we'll see if Weber State can, uh, can minimize some of those errors. You mentioned they had four service aces, but they also had four service errors, whereas Utah Valley, four aces and zero errors. And uh, I mean, that's four points right there. So hopefully both teams will continue to serve aggressive because that's always fun to watch. Looks like the Wildcats are gonna to start to serve. And just wanted to mention, talked with Coach Atoa and uh, some of the other folks here uh, before the game, and just wanted to mention, and, and you know, this past February 4th, uh, we lost a, a huge uh, influential person here, not only for uh, volleyball at Utah Valley, but uh, you know, in our community in general, and that was uh, Lori Richards, who passed away. Uh, with uh, you know due to breast cancer and, and complications there and, and so we just wanted to make mention of that uh, this whole season is dedicated to her coach Atoll wanted to make sure that that, that we mentioned that and also that uh, you can see on their jerseys they have her initials there uh, embroidered on them so if we get a close-up uh, shot of that you know, during the match you, you may be able to see that also uh, there is a uh, Lori Richards Memorial Scholarship Fund that you can donate to uh, if you go to the Wolverine Club. Uh, you can get details on that or look that up online. Uh, there's plenty of details there on the Utah Valley website. But uh, Steve, I know a person that I was close to and that you certainly were close to as well. So uh, just, you know, big, big loss for Utah Valley Volleyball here yeah. this past winter. Lori was the, the first person I met up here in the volleyball community and uh, was, is, and will always remain uh, one of my favorite people in this valley. Just an absolute pleasure to know her. Just a sweetheart, a brilliant mind, and a great love for this sport and for this community. Huge loss, huge loss. Folks, as we get back into set number two here, Utah Valley up two to one here, uh, but looks like Wildcats are going out of bounds on that one, so Utah Valley gets another point. Erica Nish back to serve and 
trying to build some more of that momentum up in here in set number two, see if they can uh, grab another victory here. Yeah, I like what Rebecca tried to do there. She had some room down the line, but she just missed it. And there's another miss hit ball there, another uh, hitting error from the Wildcats, who just don't seem to be firing on all cylinders right now. It seems like Utah Valley came in with tons of confidence, and, and Weber State may be questioning themselves uh, after that loss in the first set. Boy, look at the front line right now for, oh, there's no wow. way that ball yeah, doesn't that ball hit the floor for sure. <laughs> I thought it, I thought I wasn't sure if he hit the floor, but I swore that McKenna totally lifted that ball. <laughs> it looked like she had it in the bread basket there, threw a little butter on it, and then yeah. you know threw it back to the back out to the baker. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing going Weaver State's way so far in this uh, second set, down five to one. As is Tom Peterson's uh, demeanor, though, very cool, very calm, doesn't get rattled. He knows there's plenty, plenty, plenty more points to be played, so he's not going to get too wrapped up in what happens in one point. Yeah, Tom says he just absolutely loves coaching for Weaver State, just the people that he works with and the kids that he works with. And I said, how is that? I know Because he coached my older brother at BYU years ago, and I said, how is it coaching women's as opposed to men's? And he said, you know, it's, it's a lot more similar than it is dissimilar. And he says, uh, the one... The one thing about coaching girls is they don't know how much, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I thought, man, that is two like Buddha-like sayings from him. I was sitting there talking, I was like, wow, Tom, that was deep. I like getting that. Your, getting your money's worth tonight. Yeah, seriously. I, I did not have a recorder when I talked to that guy, apparently. Such a good guy. I've known him since I was like 12. Good guy. Wow. Bailey wow. Ferris that time. Uh, Make a little bit of noise out there on the no left freshman side. freshman nerves on that swing. Nope. Just bomb. Found the seam in the block and just drove right through it. And when she's in the front line, she has, you've got like a six foot, maybe and a half inch average for the height on her, Katie, and Brooklyn. Yeah, you oh, missed a pretty of big them. team. Brooklyn trying to dump there and just kind of miss contact with the ball and right to the defense. Wow, Two in a row. Good spot by McKenna on the second one. I didn't like the first one too much. McKenna playing the ball over this time. Looks like they're going to go to the middle again. Kind of the back quick there with number 15, Brianna Wilms. And no touch on that and out of bounds. Wow. Boy, I thought that one was in, but, you know, I'm not the one with well, the uh, stick, so. Well, it did, catch the, uh, it did catch the tape a little, which if that ball had topspin on it, it probably would have gone in, but... Uh, Catching the tape, it's a little bit flat and out of bounds, apparently. Wow, wow. look at UV. That was Han Solo by uh, <laughs> McKenna there. They tried to go over, but she wasn't having it. Nice roll shot by Katie Fritzler on the front, taking a little something off, getting that point. Tom See Peterson on the replay here. Not liking what he sees here, the energy on his side of the net, wanting to call a timeout. And taking his setter out. Replacing her with oh, number not one. Not timeout, but yes, from taking his setter out of the match. Wow. Number one, Whitney Hunt entering the match. Looks like she's going to be in rotation number four there. Oh wow, that's a tough ball to get past here. She yeah. really didn't have much else she could do with it, Steve. Right, right out of the blocks, and she's got to deal with that pass. And that's what's been going on all night. Such tough serving, and the passes are all over the place. She better have her running shoes on because uh, she's going to be chasing that ball down. Bailey Ferris getting a little redemption on the service line there. Maybe a jet pack for that pass. I don't know. I don't, maybe the running shoes aren't going to get it done. That's one of the things you see differently from the women's game to the men's game. On that first set, the guys would have been able to chuck that ball all the way to the outside or hit it back to the opposite. Right. The women's game just don't play quite that way. She tried to go there, but there's no one there on that spot, so no one there in the D zone. And that hit goes long by Katie Fritzler. So Weber State's going to get a little bit of a gift there. And number three, Rebecca Fuchs back to serve. Katoa back into the match in the front row. Just a cannon of a shoulder. Let's see if she gets an opportunity to use it. Fuchs not having a great hitting night so far. See what she can do from the service yeah, line. Another great jump serve. Wow. wow. McKenna Look at Tate. McKenna. <laughs> you better get some more blockers. She is teeing off on that ball. Look at this. I love watching her play, too. She's just got a lot of energy. And she's just a fiery player. It's great. It's always nice when you just have that go-to person. 
And it yeah. looks like right now that wow. McKenna Tate is the go-to person at five, whatever she is yeah. uh, for Utah Valley right now. Nice little roll shot. We're going to see it right here. Just over the block. Nobody home in the middle of the court. Everybody was digging in, yeah. and nobody was there. Oh, wow. That ball is just way out to the what everyone likes to call now. And I don't, I don't really like this term, out to the pin. But uh, You don't like that? I really don't like that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's too new school for me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that ball uh, was, was set pretty fast and a little too far out. Wow. Katoa not able to handle it. And that one there, she Great tries pass, to go. Right? Yeah. Great set. And she just got housed. Yeah, she did. I think UV knew she was going to go out there. And that's the thing, when you're not passing great, you really don't have the middles as an option. So the blockers are just sitting there waiting. Katie Fritzer just couldn't bring that one back up off the floor. And uh, Weber State gets another, what I'll call a gift, because they're down in a big hole right now, Steve. Man. 14, or I should say five to 14 for the Wildcats uh, being down right now in set number two. Oh, Brianna Bailey Wilms let that ball nice go. Serve. McKenna and Patty are hunting it down. Number 15, Brandon Wilms going uh, off the back wall there. Yeah, she was not ready for that set at all. Well, we're going to step aside for a media timeout. So we will be back in just a moment with more women's volleyball at Utah Valley University. Costa Vida was born on the beach, so the coast inspires how we prepare everything from our crisp salads to our irresistible burritos. And with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from, meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience. Costa Vida, the coast is calling. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Folks, welcome back to our action, where Utah Valley leads 15 to five in set number two, commanding performance here uh, by the Wolverines in the second set. Number nine, McKenna Tate is so far, I think, the player of the match, really on fire, can't be stopped, whether it's uh, going off the block, hitting the floor, or just using smart shots, Steve. She's everywhere tonight. And she's hitting 667 for this second set. She and uh, Bailey Ferris both hitting 667 early on, whereas Rebecca Fuchs and Whitney Hunt are both hitting negative 500 for Weber State. They're just struggling big time offensively, hitting negative 278 so far in this second set. I mean, that's just, that is, uh, that's not great. It's gonna be tough to win ball games when you're struggling that hard. Yeah, and I thought they'd call that one McKinnon Tate with the uh, mishandled ball or two contacts called by Tom So Gibbons. she does have a kryptonite then. So she, she is human. She does make a mistake. Maybe at least on the, on the push <laughs> from the, from one side to the other. Yeah. Looks like number one, Whitney Hunt back to serve for the Wildcats. See if the Wildcats can kind of climb out of this hole they're in right now, get something going. I'm sure uh, Coach Peterson not real happy with the uh, results thus far in the second set. That ball just wide. And looks like uh, he's gonna go back with his starting setter, number 11. You know, you mentioned earlier that uh, Weaver State's got four transfers this year. Rebecca Fuchs from Utah, Audrey Biggs from uh, Wichita State. You've got uh, Mariah Katoa from BYU and Laurel Bodily from Utah State. So big programs that four of their starters have transferred from. But uh, check well, the replay here. Steve Erica Nish just on this two attack. Looks like she was just a little bit early maybe. And uh, maybe some of that's due to just her knee. But uh, yeah, it looked like the block was there and set. 
And I think Eric actually mishit that. That ball probably would have sailed to the back wall if there hadn't been a touch on the block. Yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of movement in the lineup for uh, the Wildcats. You know, like you said, transfers coming in. Uh, sometimes that is good for a program. Sometimes it's not. It just really kind of depends uh, where you're at, you know, with seniors and those kind of things. Right. I think uh, for Coach Peterson being a new coach, only in his, well, first year and a half of, as a coach, he really isn't. Uh, didn't have a full season last year, so I think uh, for him it's probably a good thing. He's got some experienced players coming from some bigger programs uh, to help him out. So yeah, and that, you know, obviously very athletic girls, but but do they gel together and, and do they mesh well on the court? And you know, so far tonight, uh, struggling, 19 to seven in this second set. I mean, it is all Utah Valley at this point. To look at the cheerleaders here for Utah Valley. Looks like they're going to try something that uh, probably shouldn't try at home, folks. <laughs> and it was successful. So, once again, good job by the Utah Valley cheerleaders. We got Willie out here pumping the crowd up, getting the mall going, making some noise. The mall Coach, Atoa. Section. Coach Atoa is still all business, making sure everybody stays motivated, making sure everyone stays focused. And I'm sure when he comes back out of this timeout, he wants nothing more than to jump right back into the Wildcats. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, when you're up 19 to 7, it's so easy to take your foot off the gas and just kind of slow it down and coast. But that's a dangerous thing to do because you've still got a whole other set at least to play. And if you allow your kids to to kind of get relaxed and, and get complacent. You know, it's a nice Weber State team. They're not functioning perfectly right now, but still very dangerous. So yeah, you're right. So Sam's got to keep these guys motivated and, and ready to finish this out. Wow, a little miscommunication there on the quick set to Audrey Gee. Bailey Ferris just putting the ball back into play. Set from the libero. And Katie Fritzler just missing the block on that one. He couldn't get it back up. So. Wildcats earning their first point here in a while. Yeah, Rebecca Fuchs with a big swing there on the outside. Able to force that ball through a big Wolverine block. Brooklyn Campbell, oh, once again, just a little too aggressive at the net is Folks, remember to find out more about your UVU women's volleyball team. Head on over to wolverinegreen.com. There you can find team stats, photos, and the complete season schedule. That's wolverinegreen.com. Also, folks, if you're a member of the mall, and if not, check out the Mighty Athletic Wolverine League where you can get great discounts on all things sports-related and more at UVU Mall. We got the mall in the house tonight. Looks like we got a pretty good group there. They're making some noise. Willie's getting them going. Looks like the Wolverines haven't let up yet. They've still got their foot on the gas in this one, Steve. And I think, uh, I don't expect to see any let up right now. I think they've kind of found their comfort zone and uh, maybe settled down a little bit. Yeah, and I, I think this timeout might be more about the third set than it is about this set. I mean, it, they would have to go on the run of a lifetime to come back and win this second set. But still, he wants his girls to stay focused and to stay in this set and in this match so that they can gain some momentum and take that into the third set. As we get ready to have the teams take back the, the floor, just want to mention we're going to be having an interview with athletic director Mike Jacobson here between uh, sets number two and three, so at our, what we call halftime here in volleyball. Jake, Mike Jacobson is going to come over and talk to us, give us a little insight about where Utah Valley University Athletics is as a whole and where we can expect to see things going, all the changes that are happening here and uh, all the excitement that's taking place at Utah Valley and, and in the Great West Conference and, and beyond. Looks like Eric and Nish back to serve for the Wolverines. See if they can keep pushing this one and get the win here in set number two. Right back to the middle is Weber State with no luck. And wow. Bailey Ferris once again on the outside. Looking good, Steve. Just hammering that ball right past a pretty nice Weber State block. 
finding the seam right in between the middle and the outside blocker and just crushing that ball. It's a perfect, perfect example there of hitting the seam. Oh, that's a tough pass. Wow, pretty nice set. Wow. wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Bailey Ferris. Bailey is uh, he's doing great here. Just, as you that. mentioned earlier, Steve, look at the uh, extension. She just gets up, over, and no go for. Yeah, just fronting the hitter perfectly and just reading her arm swing and just clamping that ball. Dama Cox was the one that got blocked on that one. She's a six foot outside hitter. She's a senior for the Wildcats. So she's been in the program for a long time, been contributing there. And uh, man, she sure looks taller than six foot to me. Yeah, for real. 23 to eight. After taking the first set, 25-20. Wolverines clearly in the driver's seat at this wow. point. I thought that one was going to fall off the table, Steve, and hit the back line, but it just kept going just a little too far. And the uh, Wildcats get another shot at it, but are down 9-23, to and it's still not looking good for, for Tom Peterson's team. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me for that serve to go in. I mean, everything has been going UV's way tonight. It's a great serve right there out to Bailey Ferris. But once again, she's converting on the outside, Steve. Yeah, we call that the set me pass. Really, uh, Brooklyn had no other option but to set Bailey on that pass. But Bailey doing a nice job of putting it away and bringing their team to set point. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Ferris serving that ball, and that's a nice touch by Patty, but just couldn't get it back up for the transition point. So Utah Valley's gonna have to earn one here on the rece reception. And let's see, substitution back into the match. It looks like, nope, that's called back off and that's a change. So number three, Rebecca Fuchs going back into the match to serve. We know and Rebecca's got a nice jump serve, but uh, boy, she's gonna have to have uh, a really nice jump serve. Maybe, uh, what is that, 15 straight? Yeah, to get the lead. <laughs> Nice ball down the line. Great set oh, by that Brooklyn. Ball was going out of bounds, but uh, McKenna <laughs> touching that ball. Maybe she was trying to save the down ref from taking that one off the nose. Now See this here. ball clearly going out of bounds. It's funny that she touched that. She knew it too. Right <laughs> when she did it, she knew it was it was gone. That's funny. So I think she just wanted this last kill. Maybe that's it. We'll see if she gets it <laughs> set here. Yeah, but if you're setter, do you want to reward her after that? No, you don't. Oh, that didn't even cross the net. So no. uh, four hits there for UV. Katie Fritzer just hit now one below the tape. Not able to convert. And I'm kind of thinking it's McKenna Tate time right now. It might be. UV just needing one side out to win this game. See some communication going on between Brooklyn and uh, Katie, but it doesn't really matter because when you serve the ball into the net on set point, it's over. Ball game. Utah Valley goes into the break up two and clearly in control here at Utah Valley. Folks, we'll be right back with the interview from Mike Jacobson. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more action. Best benefit for taking summer classes is they have a chance to get into their program um, sooner. Tuition is cheaper for non-resident students. Parking is more accessible. It's a little bit more relaxed here at UVU during the summer, and I think that that's so good for some students. If they're really looking for that individualized experience with a faculty member, summer is a great time to get in and really meet with someone. I'd say the biggest benefit is that they get smaller class sizes. Smaller class sizes. The classes are smaller. We have smaller classes. Wolverine Track is a program that's on UV Link that gives students access to see immediate results of their progress to see how their classes are fitting into their degree requirements, to see what they should be taking next. Summer semesters are better. I, I, I've seen the success of my students personally, and I've seen that they like it a lot better. Students need to come to us because we're the, their best friends. We're the people on campus who are going to help them the most in getting where they want to go. Having an amazing experience at college isn't just found in the classroom. It's just as important to have a great experience away from the books. At Wolverine Crossing, we totally understand that. Take a look around. We offer an experience that helps you gain the most of what it means to learn and grow. Plus, you won't find better amenities anywhere else. If you're looking for student housing that will enhance your college experience, look no further. Wolverine Crossing. Student living redefined. Conveniently located just across the freeway from UVU. If 
you're serious about going to college and getting a head start on the process, come get a feel for what university life is like. UVU Days are designed with you in mind. UVU Days are department-specific events held on Saturdays that will allow you to become a student for a day. These events are free and breakfast and lunch are served. For more information, dates, and times, please visit our website at www.uvu.edu forward slash future students. Come experience what UVU has to offer in your field of study. Welcome back to our match, folks, where Utah Valley is leading two sets to none over the Weber State Wildcats. And with us here joining us is our esteemed athletic director, Mr. Michael Jacobson. Uh, Mike, welcome. It's good to have you here. It's good to be here. Nice to have you guys here covering the game. That's we, good. We, we enjoy it very much. Uh, we're here, obviously, the tonight's match, Utah Valley's in the driver's seat, doing well. Things are looking good. Uh, Utah Valley's trying to make that jump here uh, in the season. They're down, you know, a little bit. Uh, normally they're up, you know, maybe 3-0. Right now their record's 1-3, so they're looking to kind of make that move. Uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts about uh, the state of volleyball and, and you know, what uh, you enjoy about volleyball and, and <laughs> what you love about it. Well, I, uh, I just enjoy the sport. It's just a great, um, a great team sport uh, to see the girls play together. And, you know, some of the things they're able to do just amazes me sometimes, the, the skill level and the talent. Uh, and athleticism that they have is just tremendous. Uh, you know, I, our volleyball team is much like most of our other teams this year, and that is we're, we're really young. You know, we had, a, we had an outstanding year last year with, with all of our programs being very, very successful, and we lost a, a great group of uh, seniors. And so, you know, we're playing three freshmen, a couple, uh, you know, sophomores and a junior and senior out here, and, and, and every one of our teams are the same way. You know, we lost some key seniors, and uh, so it's kind of a re rebuilding year, but uh, uh, our uh, hope is that, uh, you know, we don't have to rebuild too much, and seeing the girls rebound and playing the way they are tonight uh, is really a positive thing for us, and so we're looking forward to having, a, having another outstanding year. So tell us a little bit about, we've got some things happening here at the university this year. We've got the Women's Great Western Conference uh, Volleyball Tournament that's going to be held here. The Women's Soccer is also going to hold their uh, conference tournament here. Tell us a little bit about that and what kind of excitement that brings here to the university and what you know that means to you and, and uh, you know on a personal or you know. Uh, yeah, note. we've um, we've hosted all the other championships in the Great West you know in the last three years and so. Uh, this will finish it up as far as uh, the, the two we haven't hosted up to this point and, and be able to host our volleyball and host the soccer on our campus where we, we feel we have out, some outstanding facilities and tremendous support and we think we can really put on a, a first class event for it and so in all reality we really look forward to it. Uh, the hardest thing with uh, these two sports is that they compete at the same time and uh, the, the tournaments are just a week apart. And so for my support people, those ones that really make everything happen as far as the, the setup and making things go smooth, uh, it puts a lot of pressure and a lot of extra work on them during that period of time. But, you know, that's what we're in the business for. That's what we do. And so we're excited about uh, that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, also, I wanted to make a mention about some of the construction, the different things that we see going on here at the university. What, uh, what's going on? What can you tell us about that? You know, I've been here for a few years, and every year I've been here, we've had major construction going on. So that, that's nothing new. But uh, just outside here in the two parking lots that we have just to the east of us, uh, we've got two things going on. We've got um, a 500-car uh, um, parking unit going on out there, one, uh, one level down and uh, four levels up. And so it's going to be... Uh, we're going to have more parking than we've had before out there, but uh, it'll be a great addition, and it'll be done in about a year. And we're also building a, a student wellness center, which is uh, just a place for the, uh, the students to go and have fun. There's going to have bowling alleys in it and uh, four different gymnasiums and uh, aerobics and yoga uh, facilities and uh, just everything the kids, a climbing wall. It's just a place for the students to go and relax and have fun and uh, and stick around campus a little bit. And that's going to be a tremendous facility when it's done also. And it'll be about 18 months for it's done. Awesome. Well, folks, we're going to be taking a break here. We'll come back. Uh, maybe we can get uh, Mr. Jacobson to stay around just a little bit while we have the match going on and talk to him a little bit more. And uh, we'll be right back, so don't go away. 
Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Dr. John is a real UVU professor, not an actor. So to tell his story, we hired a UVU student. Knowledge-based edification increases executive functioning in the frontal lobes. Yo, dude, UVU is more than an education. It's a life experience. UVU facilitates the discovery of your personal Weltanschauung. What? Dude, you don't know everything yet. Utah Valley University. It's your university. Utah Valley Wolverines leading Weber State Wildcats. Two sets done here in this match. Steve, we're looking at the stats here uh, between the sets and just want to see what sticks out in your mind as to the keys, you know, uh, to the match as they pertain to what we talked about before and how it's shaping up. Yeah, that was probably one of the most uh, lopsided victories we're going to see in, uh, in college volleyball. And we'll get a chance to see uh, some of the highlights here from uh, the UVU women's volleyball that last set. It was pretty much all UV, everything going their way from the service line, blocking, hitting, the defense. I mean, they were flawless and everything uh, was really going UV's way. And, and the Wildcats just struggled to get anything going offensively. At one point hitting almost negative 300. By the end of that set, uh, they climbed out of the cellar barely, hitting 016, where UVU hit 333 on that set, which is three hitting errors while Weber State had 11. So, uh, I mean, again, such a, a lopsided victory that you will rarely see 12 to 25. But, uh, you know, at this point, uh, Weber State's got to show up and uh, and play some ball or else uh, they might as well just get those uh, buses started up. It's, it's here. Yeah, I saw Something the bus out there, so I'm sure uh, Tom Peterson will get it started if, if, if not like now it's looking. But I think uh, there's a lot of fight left in the Wildcats and we'll see a a good conclusion to the match either way. Yeah, the Wildcats, uh, we mentioned they've got some some nice talent that has transferred for some, uh, from some big programs, but it's just a matter of putting it together on the floor and uh, and getting dialed in offensively as well as the serve receive. Looks like the teams are taken back to court, and we're going to be doing a lineup check here really quick, and then we'll be underway with set number three talked about some of the things uh, and showed some of those things in the highlights. One of the things still, the blocking for Utah Valley has just been really, really good tonight. And also, uh, you know, we've, we've got some good attack percentages going on, especially out at the outside hitter positions. McKenna Tate's doing great. Bailey Ferris is doing well. And just leading into that, I uh, just want to mention now, number seven, the former Lindsey Barker, who is now Lindsey Morrell is entering the match, getting some of her first action for this evening. So it looks like she's happy, she's ready to go, she's getting loose, and uh, pretty excited, I'm sure, to get back and get on the court. Yeah, Utah Valley, boy, their offense has just been just firing on all cylinders. McKenna Tate hitting 600, seven kills on 10 attempts. Erica Nish, four kills on six, hitting 667. And uh, even Bailey Farish, the freshman, 7 of 13, hitting 385. 
Uh, 385 is a pretty respectable uh, hitting percentage. Anything over 500 is gnarly. 600 and 667. Two of the leading hitters on UB's team are just unconscious right now. And it looks like number three, Brooklyn Hall, back to serve for the Wolverines. Start us off for set number three. Not a good pass for the Wildcats. Fuchs tries to do something with it, but that's put outside to McKinney Tate, who goes up and over the block, looking for some hands, but uh, going long on that one. I think McKenna was a little anxious on that swing. I think she got under the ball and didn't even uh, didn't even finish her swing, just kind of half cocked and uh, no top spin, and that ball spatched well out of bounds. Yeah, you saw in the replay there, she didn't even break her wrist, so right. no, uh, no top spin at all in that case. That's not a bad swing when you're hitting against somebody that's 6'7", but uh, <laughs> otherwise you're in trouble. McKenna trying to roll shot over the block this time, but picked up and put down this time by Rebecca Fuchs, who's getting pretty excited over there, trying to get something going. As yeah, see. exactly. I think she's just trying to get her, her teammates going and getting them excited. And they do. They got a lot to cheer about. I mean, we're early on in this first or this third set, and they're already up 2-0. So, I mean, if they can get some momentum and get some excitement on their side of the net, good things could happen. Going to the back side this time. And that ball is put on UV side, so that is a point. You'll see it just squeak underneath there. Nice off the job. Block. Yeah, tool in the block out of bounds. Number two, McKay Tarbox back to her second serve there in a row. Push to the middle, Lauren Stringham. Can't convert. And Wildcats get one out of the middle themselves on the slide play. Well, would have liked to have been a fly on the wall, but uh, Tom talked to his girls in that break because 4-0. Boy, this is, uh, this is the side of the Wildcats we have yet to see tonight. Nice pass by McKenna that time, pushed out. Wow, wow. even Eric and Nish getting blocked. Look at that roll shot to the corner. Uh, outdoor player. Someone's getting ready to take the beach. Speaking Man. of outdoor players, former Utah Valley University Wolverine, Cami Manwill, playing with uh, Angela Peterson, who's a great local player who actually played for New Mexico State University uh, in college. And they took fifth at the mother load uh, this past wow. weekend. And I so heard they actually turned that tournament into a, an NBL tournament, so the National Volleyball League, and they took fifth. Wow, that's a big time. Yeah, that's big time. So congratulations to Cami and to uh, her partner really cool. Angela on that one. So our uh, alumni are getting it done. That's awesome. Fuchs back with her jump serve there, Steve. She unloads that one, but Utah Valley squeaks it through. Erica Nish coming into the middle that time. Yeah, Erica killing them with kindness. Rather than just bombing away, she's a nice little dink into the block that was already coming down and, and down their side of the net. The tide is starting, starting to turn a little bit here. And uh, Utah Valley down only by three now, two to five for the Wildcats. And it looks like we're in another transition play here. Brooklyn Campbell back to the outside. Lindsay wasn't really ready for that set. Yeah, I that was really low and inside. And uh, a little bit of a trap set there. Not a whole lot she could do, but just try to put something on it and go angle. And uh, boy, Wildcats were all over it. I think she had Erica almost with the one-on-one -on -one or one-on-none on the on the backside here. She's gonna bring her around this time. Kitty Fritzer going high off the block. And Wildcats going back to the outside with the tip. It's still in play, a nice job by the Wolverines, keeping it alive. Look at Erica all by herself. Oh, All by boy. herself and on one bad leg. It seems like she's favoring it just a little. It might be a little bit sore I'm now. I'm sure it is. She's been working hard. And I think that's why they took her out of the middle was to get her out of that constant transition oh, that yeah. middle's doing so blocking much and movement. hitting. Yeah. Boy, the Wildcats have got to be careful here because it looks like the momentum has shifted a little bit. They've got to hold on. Nice swing there off the block. Showing here, which will just squeak it by the outside right hand of Brooklyn Hall and just getting enough. Piper Walleen with a really nice swing there. Off the block and down. Up seven to three early on in this third set. It is win or go home for the Wildcats. Whitney Hunt serving back for the Wildcats. And Look McKenna, McKenna. out of the back row. You know, I think that's a good place for her because she'll have such a big 
vision, as you see here, she can see the whole block form right there and can decide whether she wants to go and challenge it, go around it, over it, where she wants to go. That's a great, great set for her. That is, man, just the, the high-flying McKenna Tate out of the back row, challenging the triple block and getting it done. Boy, I'm surprised uh, the Wolverines aren't all over that at this point. I mean, she loves that spot. Penrod love, loving to uh, utilize the tip or even the soft set to the middle. Didn't work a whole lot for him in set number two. Katie Fritzer going off the top of the block on that one, swinging high. Yeah, Rebecca, I don't know what happened there. She was like something in her eye or something. She was very late on that block. Just a reminder, we're not only on Facebook, but come follow us at Utah Valley University where wow. you can get updates to upcoming events and news in less than 140 characters. So check it out on Twitter, Utah Valley Univ. And Audrey begs with just the bomb down the line, past the block. Nice short serve wow, handled well by pass. the Wolverines. And once again, Mrs. Automatic. Seriously, that's got to be her middle name, right? Automatic. McKenna Tate. It's the McKenna Show. And it's all working for her. The off speed, the hammer, back row, front row. Wow, that was a kind of a broken play. But uh, number 15, <laughs> Brianna Wilms, just doing the best she could with it. You yeah, see here, she's look at just this quick little power dink. Got it done. Not the not the right pass to run that set off of. Wildcats up ten to six. Nice deep serve, too much on it, and it flies long. Patty Harrison, a nice job letting that go. Oh, Patty Hatch, I apologize. I still want to call her Patty Flag. That's my fault. Oh, nice block from the Wolverines. Wow. That's a tough, tough ball to hit. She pushed that one way, way to the outside. And that angle, as you know, Steve, is an outside hitter. That's a tough angle to hit, oh, especially yeah. when it's to the antenna. Well, and that ball, yeah, coming to the front row from the back and outside the pin. I'm going to go ahead and say it, even though you don't like it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty much impossible shot to hit. Wow, <laughs> apparently that was too. Big, big block, Erica Nish. Well, all of, all of Erica's friends, as you see on the replay, and former teammates, they're all married now, right? <laughs> well, the guys should be lining up now because yeah. Erica is like taking over this Man, old match. no kidding. Wow. Great swing by Lindsay Morell on the outside, getting her involved. See here on the replay, she gets all of that momentum like you talked about before, Steve. You had her approach that time and able to really make a, a good swing and a kill. Yeah, but I'll tell you, after a, a very slow start from the, the Wolverines, it is time to go, and they are just getting it done. They were uh, they were tied up 10-10, but with that swing, they're saying there was a touch on that because that ball was long. I but think the Erica... Wildcats just looking at her demeanor there, it looked like she knew she had touched it just a little bit enough to yeah. slow it up. Wildcats hanging on to a one point, now a two point lead with a big, big serve from Rebecca Fuchs. Looks like Utah Valley may want to just scoot back a little bit. Maybe they want to give that jump serve some depth and uh, just step up to it if it comes. I haven't seen her do a little jump serve uh, roll over the net, like the, the off speed, but if she's got that, that could be dangerous. Oh, just long. Good for her, though, for getting after it. She's got uh, one of the better serves on the team. And yeah. if she doesn't do it, who is going to? Yeah, watching her warm up, she was really ripping them. So looks like she's utilizing it now. Patty Hatch back to serve for the Wolverines. Going to go short with the floater. Handled well by the Wildcats. Look at Patty. Patty right there to dig it. And wow. just what we talked about, Steve. Set her in that back row pipe position, what we like to call the pipe. You see here, she's got plenty of time. Yeah, look at her vision right here. She sees where everybody's set up, sees all that real estate over there with nobody home. Great job by number three, Rebecca Fuchs, to get to the ball, but just couldn't bring it back up. That's tough. 
Wow, nice pass from the libero. Wow, that's a, you know, that's a great play. Rebecca's got a great arm. Probably uh, thought she'd get a conversion on that one, but just looked like she turned her body, maybe didn't get a right footwork or something. And right, just maybe trying to do too much with it. And down and out. Well, Reen's starting to make their move here in the third set, up 13 to 12. Erica showing it and taking it away. Oh, going to the well one too many times, we like yeah. to call it there, Steve. Yeah, Caitlin Penrod has uh, quite a few attempts offensively tonight. Looks and like Katie one. Fritzler was all over it, though. She saw that the whole way and was up with her. Another nice pass by the Wildcats, but another low set in the middle by Penrod. Yeah, Caitlin's got like eight or nine dumps tonight and only been successful with a couple of them. Now there were two sets right there in a row, and, and I we're gonna look at this here. I that's Erica you know, with the kill doing a good adjustment there. But what I want to point out is I I really uh, didn't see where Brooklyn knew where she was. Anyway, folks will come right back. Utah Valley up by two in the third set, 14-12. Don't go away. Costa Vida was born on the beach, so the coast inspires how we prepare everything from our crisp salads to our irresistible burritos. And with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from, meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience. Costa Vida, the coast is calling. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Back live, where Utah Valley Wolverines have a 15 to 12 lead here in the third set. Steve looks like the Wolverines are picking up some momentum. Patty Flagg back to serve here for the Wolverines, and I think they're looking to close the door on this match. Yeah, it looks like the Wolverines have finally got their feet under them and starting to play their volleyball again. They uh, were up three there at the break, 15 to 12, but uh, nice side out there by the Wildcats. We see the replay here. You can see that once again, a little uh, miscommunication. Lindsay and Katie just couldn't bring it up. It just falls short. Another good pass by the Wolverines and Erica getting them in the net. I think she was gonna get a kill on that soft roll shot anyway, but uh, looks like. Yeah, that was a, a nice touch by her. Look at that, that nobody over there, but uh, she was able to draw the block into the net first, so it uh, it's no. Everyone, you can nice watch pass. the game live online as well at uvu.edu slash uvu TV. Again, that's uvu.edu slash uvu TV. So check it out online, follow along. Erica Can't be here late, in person. Uh, late getting out there to block that ball and uh, gets her fingertips on it, but not enough. Wildcats within two, leading most of this set. Wolverine has got on a pretty nice run. Katie Fritzler going in the seam there. Oh, look at Patty. Ooh, Lindsay putting that ball long. to the back line, but just out, not able to convert. And uh, looks like the Wildcats are still hanging around for the moment. And Patty with just stabbing at that ball and pops it up beautifully, but uh, Wolverine's unable to convert. Nice set, wow, all the way across the net. Wolverine scoring their 17th point. Coach Atoa up off the bench looking to put a little intensity into Lindsay's game here. She's such a nice girl, nice. One of the nicest people you'll ever meet is Lindsay Morrell. And uh, Sam just trying to fire her up there a little bit, get her, get her going. She's just kind of working through her injury. So you see here where they set the ball to the back right side. Nice job there. Nice job by McKenna trying to get up and get that, but just a nice high swing. Audrey Biggs not getting a lot wow, of. Wow, nice stab by the libero. A little pancake. 
Big's not getting a lot of attempts tonight, but she puts the one she gets away. Yeah, Rebecca Fuchs struggling a little bit offensively. Back into the match is freshman Lauren Stringham at the front row. Katie Fritzler back to serve. This is going to be a big, huge block on the right side, so we'll see if they set. Well, they can't set it this now. It's going to be a force. No looks touch like, there. Looks like that yeah, was called I, by the uh, first three referee, Tom Given. Good call by Tom. I thought I saw one too, and neither of the down or the line judges had it, but Tom was able to see it. Tom's been a familiar face up on that stand, uh, both in men's and women's volleyball here locally. Long, long Does time. Does a great job. Short serve by the Wildcats, handled well. Lauren Stringham up and over the block. Man, I think you got to just set her a little bit higher. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, man, maybe even twos, because yeah, this seriously. girl can really jump. <laughs> Erica Nish back to the front row, see if she can put some more blocks down. They're going to set on her way. But this time, she changes the, uh, with her and, and, and uh, Lauren there together, they change the dynamic of the outside hitter. They can't, there's no way they're going over those two girls. So yeah. what do you do, Steve, as an outside hitter? Yeah, well, you got to just try to tool that block, because you're right, there's no way you're going over it. So yeah, that's. Uh, that's some tough work ahead of you. Who's the, who's the toughest blocker that you ever faced? You know, uh, Joe Hillman, who went on to play at BYU and, and actually won a championship with him in, in 04. When he came onto the scene, I remember him saying something pretty cocky, like, yeah, when I get to UV, I'm going to take that program over. You know, and as one of the starters at the time, I was like, Psh, yeah, right, whatever. And he came into the first practice and absolutely blocked me off the court. Like, I think he was in like 15, he, wasn't he? He had my number <laughs> like so bad. Like it was hard to show up the next practice because I was just so humble. But you know, six, seven, jumps well, left-handed. Coolest kid in the world too. He's a good friend of mine. But yeah, Joe Hillman, he's a good friend when he's not on the other side of the net from me. Yeah, because he'll put you in the closet yeah, real quick. A, feel like you're hitting out of a phone booth. I mean, I don't have any trouble hitting over him, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't jump size me. You're the one guy on this planet then. <laughs> Utah Valley trying I just to make short really work. High. <laughs> yeah. Never fails. <laughs> yeah, you can hit over him and then it, it goes right. over the building say, next door too. I didn't say where it was you ending say it was up. I just in. said it was going over him. Yeah, I hear you. Number three, Brooklyn Hall back to serve. 20 Utah to Valley. 17 in this third set. Utah Valley with a three point lead here. Seeing if they can get it done. They're going to get some help that time. Wildcats hit that one long. Another miss hit ball. This looks like it goes off her wrist. I don't even know if that contacted her hand. No, it didn't get contact her hand at all. Yeah. That was all wrist. It's hard to get a top spin when Audrey you hit Biggs it. Audrey Biggs struggling tonight. Now she's not the only one over there. Wow, look at that. UV is just so dialed in Erica tonight. Nish can do no wrong. All over the floor. What, as you see here, though, the one thing I'm noticing, though, just I don't know if Brooklyn senses where she's at on the court all the time in relationship to the net. And as a setter, you really got to know where you're at because that's going to sometimes change where you want to set the ball or who you want to set the ball to. Right. I know when I'm, if I'm way out or if I'm way off, I'm not going to set the middle. You know, I'm not going to try to force it unless maybe there's just nobody there and I can see that right. and then I might shove it there. But then that's, you know, that's more often than not, it's not going to happen. So you got to know where you're at because that's going to dictate where you're going to set the backside. Maybe you're going to set, you know, the D ball, the pipe. You're going to push it to the outside if you can, those kind of things. So I, I still don't see if Brooklyn always knows where she's at in relationship to the net. And I don't know if sometimes she's just guessing, going with the, the hitter that she likes, you know? Right, just feeding the big hitter, right. So, but, and that's, you know, that's one thing that shows you uh, a great setter, being able to, I mean, they're basically the quarterback for this team. And so they might have a play drawn up, but then depending on where the pass is or, or what that setter sees on the other side of the net, you know, she's going to make those quick little judgment calls and decide, hey, you know what, I've got a smaller blocker on Erica Nish, and she's red hot anyway, so I don't care what the play is. I'm just going to chuck that ball back to her and let her do what she does. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things when you watch setters. You and I have both played with, with Brad Collins, a very uh, known name here locally. Amazing setter. So good at being able to read what the other side of the net's doing. Wow. Wow. <laughs> 
Wow, McKenna Tate. She looked like she was about 6'8 on that block. Look at the swing block. Just goes up and houses that ball straight down all by herself. And when you're on the other side of the net and the girl that's, and it's happened to me a few times though, I'm a little bit shorter as far as the guy's game goes, but a pretty good blocker for my height. But man, wow. what's the mindset of the, of, the, of the blocker, like even for yourself as the hitter, when you get blocked by a smaller, yeah. smaller person? You're like, look how small that block is on the other side of the net. Feed me the ball. And then you get housed straight down, <laughs> like what just happened there. Wow, huge block there by UV. Closing the seam and just closing the door on that swing. McKenna Tate for match point, and that's it, Steve. I think it ends up uh, just as it should. McKenna Tate with the last last point. Utah Valley wins the third set, wow. 25 to 17. And folks, we'll be right back with some great interviews with Coach Atoa. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Dr. John is a real UVU professor, not an actor. So to tell his story, we hired a UVU student. Knowledge-based edification increases executive functioning in the frontal lobes. Yo, dude, UVU is more than an education. It's a life experience. UVU facilitates the discovery of your personal Weltanschauung. What? Dude, you don't know everything yet. Utah Valley University. University. I'm Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. Hoska. The coastal life. What do we love about it? The extreme. The unexpected. The original. The results are delicious, like the new sweet Baja shrimp tacos at Costa Vida. They're gnarly. Fully loaded with honey shrimp and mango salsa. And with cilantro, lime, rice, and beans, it's a full-on meal. So go big, get fresh. Escape to Costa Vida. Folks, welcome back live Shereen Family Activity Center where Utah Valley Wolverines have just defeated the Weber State Wildcats. That's some three sets to none. Joining us here for our post-game interview is Coach Sam Matoa. First of all, Coach, welcome. Thank you. And Thank you. Congratulations on a great win here at home. That's the way I bet that you like to open up your, your home stand here. Well, hey, uh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, we, uh, this came at a good time for us to be able to be at home. Um, you know, there are some areas in the game that we were uh, not doing very well. And uh, I felt like that we focused on that during the week. And the girls really um, were able to put it together today. And so I was really excited to see our outsides kind of get going. And our serve and pass, I thought that that was huge for us as well. And our serving um, was tough. And so uh, kudos to the girls for sticking to the game plan and being able to execute uh, and, and having the confidence to be able to kind of get out there and do it. Two key players that I really was watching tonight, obviously, first of all, McKenna Tate, unbelievable. And then also uh, your senior, Erica Nish, both of them I thought just played really, really well tonight. Well, you know, McKenna, uh, we moved her from uh, libero to who uh, outside and so, yeah, she is just a, a dang good athlete, and it's kind of taken her a little while, and it, this match really, really helps her and her confidence in being able to kind of get out there and, 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 and execute and make it happen. And, the, and then for Erica as well, I think uh, for her to be able to have a, a great uh, first match at home, uh, her, her second match uh, back from injury, 
and it's really exciting to be able to kind of see where she's been uh, and, and now be able to kind of execute and, and do well. And so really happy for her. She's not quite where we would like her to be physically, but she's getting there little by little. And so her playing in a new position as well, I think uh, uh, it, it's, it's working out well for her. And this was a good day for, for both of them. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, McKenna hitting over 500, Erica hitting over 700 injured playing a new position that's that's incredible so yeah nice job by them switching gears a little bit uh we mentioned earlier on the broadcast that uh the volleyball community here locally uh lost uh one of the the, the biggest names in the volleyball community here uh in laurie richards uh losing her to breast cancer uh, we mentioned that there's been a scholarship fund set up in her name and uh, just just talk to us a little bit about uh you know what laurie meant to you well, you know, Lori got me started in women's volleyball. I, I started at BYU with the men's, and I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, to come here, and she gave me a chance, and and she taught me how to coach women. Not that I really know how to do it still, but I'm, I think I'm getting a little bit better. She got better. you started at least. She got me started. Wait, how many daughters now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, uh, there's so much of the game that Lori taught me, and I'm so thrilled and excited about the opportunity to be able to be here at Utah Valley. But uh, to lose her, um, it's been really hard for you, for me, for Kevin, and for everybody in the community um, because of what she did here at Utah Valley. Um, she really did put Utah Valley Volleyball on the map, and then um, I was fortunate to be able to kind of come in after her. So we're dedicating the year to her. We've embroidered her initials on our jersey and uh, with the hopes that uh, we'll be able to, to live her legacy this year next year and always because she meant so much to me and she means so much to this program and to this university so you know Lori, wherever you're at we love you that's well, great perfect sam I, I i couldn't say it better thank you so much for saying those words about her and and, and love to her family even though her son just uh, beat up on me in a tournament yesterday i i still love him like a brother but, uh, yeah, the Richards are amazing people. So, Kevin, take us on out of here. Nice job tonight, Coach. Thank Thanks, you. Coach, for joining us. And, folks, we'll be right back. Go over some stats and highlights of the game. Don't go away. Come join the student section and cheer for the Mighty Wolverines. Mighty Athletic Wolverine League sports passes are now available. Your mall pass gets you tickets to every NCAA home game, free food at the tailgate parties, prizes at the games, and lots of new friends. Get more information on their Facebook page or by calling Campus Connection at 801-863-8797. Go UVU! We are very excited to have the opportunity to have the first master's degree on campus, but we're also excited about the graduate program generally to know that in the near future there will be a degree in nursing on campus and also a degree in business administration. In the fall of 2008, we will be offering one master's degree in the, in the School of Education, and that master's degree will be in curriculum instruction. It has two tracks to it. The first track is in uh, models of instruction, and the second track is ESL, or English as a Second Language. In order to be able to be accepted for the master's program, a, a person needs to have a GPA of 3.2. They need to have graduated with a bachelor's degree in education from an accredited institution. They need to take the GRE, which is the graduate records examination, and uh, they also need to have three letters of recommendation. I think one of the things that will be very important about this program is it will help to enhance the teaching profession generally. Um, it will, in addition to that, give people an opportunity to increase their salary, to make education a more profitable experience professionally. Hi, my name is Tony. I'm a student with UVU Automotive, and this is my classroom. At UVU, you can graduate with a diploma and a resume. We're back live, and we have sitting in with us this evening is our lone senior <laughs> joining us, Erica Nish. Erica, welcome to the program. Thank you. Had a great, great night tonight. Thank Did you. Did some great things. Steve mentioned uh, your hitting just off the charts. 
uh, hitting well over 700. And then also the blocks, that's what stood out to me. Uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on the new position, you know, your injury update, those kind of things where you're at. Um, well, the right side allows me to do a lot more um, because of my injury. As a middle, I still struggle with the off the one foot, um, the quickness. I'm still a little behind. My vertical's not as high yet. And so being on the right side, I am have more of a constrained area, I guess. Is and there a lot of pain still? Um, it gets sore. Does it gets it? tired. Yeah, but for the most part, it's done a lot better. At the first of the season, it, it kind of kicked me in the pants. Really? Yeah. yeah so I, pretty bad, huh? Yeah. Well, but it's definitely getting there. Right on. So. Cool. I think the transition off the net, you know, as a middle is really tough. And so as the right side, you mm -hmm. don't have to do that as often. So right. it's probably nice to be able to take a break yes. from that a little bit, right? <laughs> yes. So Definitely. Uh, what did you think about your team's performance tonight? Where did you see, you know, the strengths and the weaknesses? What do you like to see improve? You know, I felt really good about our team's energy tonight. Um, we've kind of been struggling um, getting into a system, getting into kind of a rhythm and tonight we really pulled it together I thought and I think that a lot of it was because of our energy we had positive energy flowing I also thought that our serving game Unreal. was really well yeah Very aggressive. so yeah I think that always helps when you have the serve and pass game down awesome well we're looking forward to seeing more of you more of the team and all the uh, you know improvements you guys are going to make and uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks for right. joining us. Thank Folks, you. we'll be right back. Don't go away again. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Costa Vida was born on the beach, so the coast inspires how we prepare everything from our crisp salads to our irresistible burritos. And with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from, meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience. Costa Vida, the coast is calling. Utah Valley really taking control here out of the back row. McKenna Tate was all over it tonight, Steve. Everywhere she went, looks like she did something positive, along with Erica Nish, who we just interviewed. Both of them had a really big night. Wildcats never really able to get anything really going. They had a few runs here and there, but overall, when the time came, Utah Valley was able to just take over. Yeah, Converted. huge, huge serving by the, by the Wolverines all night. Six aces, only two errors on the night. Big numbers there. Erica Nish hitting over 700. McKenna Tate, double digit kills, hitting over 500. I mean, B or, uh, Utah Valley could just get it done all over the court. Lots of defense at the net blocking, as we see there. Lots of balls dug, lots of second opportunities. And look at that solo block for McKenna Tate. Just getting it done all over the court. Utah Valley really, really taking control of this match, really able to get things done. So once again, Utah Valley, as we wrap up here, wins three sets to none over the Weber State Wildcats. Folks, thanks so much for having us. This broadcast is copyrighted by Utah Valley University, not to be used without their express permission. Once again, for Steve Vale, I am Kevin Castle, and we are shutting it down. Feed your belly and your brain without leaving campus. UVU Dining Services offers many options, such as the Valley View Room. Located in the Student Center on the second floor, the Valley View Room serves the UVU students as a restaurant at breakfast and lunchtime. On the first floor of the Student Center, you can find the Center Court Eatery, which offers fast food options including hoagie yogi, Chinese food, pizza, Mexican food, and more. 
Around campus, you can also find several cafes and a Jamba Juice to grab a quick snack to keep you fueled up throughout the day. UVU also has a fine dining option called Greg's Restaurant. The menu changes every week. All items are prepared and served by culinary arts students under the supervision of a chef instructor. You can get a discount on campus by using your UVU One card. For more information, visit the Dining Services website.